How would you answer this question? My dog really doesn't like it when I do blank to him. Or my dog really doesn't like it when I do blank. What is it that your dog really doesn't like? And what are you doing about it? Hi, I'm Susan Garrett. Welcome to Shape My Dog. Today, we're going to go over a fix for all of the things that your dog doesn't like when it happens. Now, of course, there may be extreme fears that we're not going to be able to fix today, but there's a lot of things. You'll be surprised. How did you answer that question? That's a question I asked on Facebook last week. I had over 350 people put all kinds of responses. A lot of them were very much the same. And they came down to sensations. My dog doesn't like it when he sees me sweeping the floor. So it's sight, sweeping the floor, shoveling the snow, raking the leaves. That could also involve a sound or a motion because if you're shoveling, the throwing of the snow might be the trigger. We've talked about triggers here on Shape by Dogs before. The sight of the leaves, the sound of the rake. So it's the dog may not like the sight, the sound, the feel, the smell, or even the sensation. So there are people who say, uh, my dog doesn't like it when I groom him or when I put eye drops in his eyes or I clean his ears or my dog really doesn't like when I ask him to go out and potty in the rain or on wet grass, or my dog doesn't like it when I have to give him a pill or take him to the veterinarians or put on a coat or boots or a sweater. Some of you who do sports, there may be sports specific things that my dog doesn't like the seesaw or the end of the run. What is it that your dog doesn't like? And gosh, darn it, let's fix it. Because what your dog is showing you is a CER. Now I talked about CERs in podcast episode number 107, when I was sharing with you a great way to teach your dog to love to have their nails trimmed. A CER is a conditioned emotional response. So dogs can, as I mentioned in podcast episode number 130, when I was talking about conditioned responses, dogs could be conditioned to go, wow, I love that. Like when they see the sight of a leash or they, the car keys, they're conditioned to go, oh, I like that. The keys to the car create a positive CER, a positive conditioned emotional response. The dog's emotions are like, yeah, we're going for a car ride. But there also could be things that create a negative conditioned emotional response. So you pick up the grooming kit or you open the drawer that the eye drops are housed in and the dog starts licking their lips and slinking away. Your dog's sharing their of feelings about what's about to happen. And, you know, I've had people say, well, guess what? I feed you, I buy you nice things. I can do what I want you. Now that's not a great way to have a relationship. I hope there is no one else in your life that you have that thought with. I feed you, I buy you nice things. I can do what I want to you. Really? That's just not cool. And I personally think that if there's any animal that you feel that way about, that it's going to have an impact on other relationships you have in your life. Potentially, if you are a leader at work and you have people who you deem as below you, you may not feed them, you may not buy them nice things, but you have power and therefore they must submit to you, right? In an era of our life, which is, I think, a pretty grand era to be in, okay, other than the obvious pandemic thing, an era where the consciousness of the world is awakening to being kinder to people. Okay. Maybe other than that pandemic thing, as a generation, as a community in the world, we are awakening to being kinder to children and parenting more positively. And the same goes for all relationships. So when our dog says, yeah, I don't, I I don't like, I don't like what you're thinking of doing right now then that's an opportunity for us to say, I can be a better trainer for you. 
I can turn this around. I can listen to Susan Garrett's Shape by Dog podcast, and I can figure out how to turn a negative emotional response into a positive emotional response. At the very, very least, what we can do is turn it into a meaningless one, meaning there is no emotional response. It's not good. It's not bad. It's, you know, it's like when the vacuum is turned on around here. To most of my dogs, it's meaningless. Swagger, he gets excited, a little excited. He starts barking and, and bouncing up and down with a toy in, in his mouth occasionally. Nothing like some of my past dogs were, but there are a lot of dogs that are dog owners who answered this question on social media, anything electronic, like the, it started with the vacuum, it transferred to the hairdryer and the blender and anything that's electronic that makes a noise, maybe has an action. Remember it's some of these triggers are sights, sounds, uh, smells, sensation, like some dogs who don't like going in the car, it could be a vibration. It could be the stimulus of the environment going by. And there's so many things, but what we have to do is first of all, is try to take your big behavior of what is it your dog doesn't like getting a pill. I don't know, getting their teeth brushed and let's break it down into, is it the sight, the smell? Is it the sensation? Is it the you restraining them. A lot of dogs don't like being held. And guess what? If your dog goes to a veterinarian, very good chance they're going to be restrained. So that's another thing to put on your training list just for fun. Let's teach our dog to accept being held for a procedure. There's a story. It's a true story. Back when I was in university, I heard about a drill at the uh, San Diego Zoo and his name was Loon. And Loon was diabetic, but it wasn't the kind of genetic. His, his diabetes was something that wasn't passed on to his offspring. And he was the, a kind of drill that was on the endangered species list. The problem was he was diabetic and every day they had to give him insulin and they had to take blood from him. And so they went about it the way Unfortunately, a lot of people go about things with their dogs. They say, I feed you, I buy you nice things, I can do whatever I want to you. And so they used a press to press them into a corner and forcefully take whatever they wanted. And eventually, like these drills, they're pretty, I don't mean like a drill, I mean like a drill, right? They're strong animals. And when you get an animal angry, they get even stronger. And eventually it was becoming dangerous for people to use a crowd gate to try and, and corner him to do these procedures on him. And lo and behold, they decided to use what I spoke about in episode 106, consent. They got Loon to play along. Hey, it's not a big deal. They cut a hole in his cage. They welded a sleeve to the hole and with a peg on the end of the sleeve. And so what they taught Loon to do was to reach put his hand in the sleeve and grabbed the peg. Guess what that did? It made his vein pop up. And so then they shaped him, you know, gradually conditioned him to be okay with the prick of the needle. They gradually conditioned him to be okay with them drawing blood. And lo and behold, it became something that instead of being a negative conditioned emotional response, it was a positive one. Oh, I get to give blood. I get to get, and because it meant something positive for, for Loon. And so that's what we're going to do with your dogs. And so the first thing that you need to do is try to, now you might not always be able to do this, but you need to try to isolate what it is that has the dog worried. Is it the smell of maybe it's some lotion that you're opening up? Is it the sight? Is it the sensation? Is it being restrained? So you're going to look at all of the behaviors your dog doesn't like and say, what is the one that is, is lowering his quality of life the most? And, or what is the one that makes it the most difficult for us to live in the same environment? Because we want the dog to have a great life, but we want you to have a great life too. So prioritize the behaviors because your dog may have more than one of these that you have to start to work on. And when I say work, guys, it's going to be fun. You're just looking for opportunities to create good experiences for your dog. So what you're going to do is you're going to isolate. Let's say it's the eye drops. I have to give my dog these eye drops. It's super important. 
but you know, it takes three of us and we have to hold him down and he fights and he screams. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a positive CER to where you're holding these eye drops. So if it's a certain drawer, I would actually move it. It'd be easier than trying to reprogram an old one. Let's just move it to a different drawer or a different location, a shelf. It's in a bag so that uh, you go to episode number 107, where I shared how to create a CER, two different tools that you use for grooming or for nail trimming. You're going to do the exact same thing with your eye drops. So now the dog sees the eye drops and they go, Ooh, yeah, I like that. What's going to happen with these eye drops? I really like them. Meanwhile, you're going to create a position that your dog can say, I'm okay with what's going on. So for example, every day, all of my dogs get one TDC uh, squirted onto their gums. So the position of consent, what I call the game on position for me putting the one TDC on their gums is I ask them to put their paws up on a low table. And if they hold their paws up, they're saying, you have consent to lift my lip. If when I lift their lip, they hold their head still, they're saying, you have consent to squeeze that yummy stuff into my mouth. I don't know if it's yummy. I've never tasted it, but I'm assuming so. And you know, at first my dogs didn't like this. And so I had to work this in stages and I'm going to share with you what that looks like. And then at the end of that, I give them a, a treat. All right. So let's say for eye drops or ear drops, maybe having the dog standing with their head be bopping all over might make it more difficult for you. So for a situation like that, I would teach my dog to rest their head on a chair or a footstool. And so as long as their head is on the footstool, they're saying to you, you have consent to carry on. And because I see that this is a good thing, you're getting buy-in from the dog, right? You know, you, you say, well, why do I have to get buy-in? Because you love them and you want them to have this great life. I just, I still get a kick every morning seeing my dogs get their one TDC and go, yeah, it's my turn. No, no, no. I want to go first. No, it's my turn. Wouldn't you much rather have that? The time that you're going to have to invest doing these steps that I'm going to suggest, yes, it might take you a while. It might even take you several weeks or maybe longer, but it's an investment into the many, many years of the rest of your dog's life. So we want to create a positive emotional response for all of the things that we're going to be doing for restraining, for putting on a sweater, for putting on a coat. So you're going to break these things down into small layers. So first off, I might use a hand touch and I've got a video. If you're watching this on YouTube, I'll put a link here on a video that where I'm teaching you how to teach a hand touch. If you're listening, um, I'm going to put it in the show notes for you. So come on over to the show notes and I'm going to have some links in there for you. So we're going to teach our dog how to do a hand touch. And we might just put the hand touch above something sturdy, like the thing that I use is a built-in bench. My dogs and I put a dirty dog doormat on the built-in bench so their paws don't slide and they don't get afraid. So I just get them hand touch, I put your paws up, get a cookie, get lost. Next dog, pause up, get a cookie, get off. So I'm building it up in stages. And so every day I'll do a hand touch. I'll, and then when I see that they're ready to put their, I'll just say, pause up, hand touch. They put their paws up. I give them a cookie, tell them they get lost. Another dog's turn, right? You can do this several times a day and they're going to be like, it's fun. Eventually you're just going to say, pause up, boom, they're going to be there. And then while they have their paws up, you might like just touch them on their face. And if you think that might even bother, touch their neck, just give them a stroke. And eventually you just want to be able to touch them all over before you get that cookie, or maybe give them one cookie, another touch, one more cookie, and eventually lift up that lip. And then you're going to be able to introduce a toothbrush one step at a time, right? And for those dogs that we're working on, we need your chin to be rested so that we can do eye drops. You're going to work at the dog coming in, putting their, their chin down, shaping that behavior. You can, I like to shape it on the ground first, just shaping their head right on the ground, teach the word head down, and then use my paw, my paw. This is a hand that has five fingers in it. Though. I like to use my hand to put their head over the footstool or a chair. Just tell them, you know, that creates the target and tell them head down. Boom. They do it. Start feeding it and give them a release. All that we want is for them to have a duration hold with their head down. 
Feed, 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 release. You need, it's your choice too. I'll put a link to that one as well. Because as the food's coming in, they're going to want to lift their head off. The head off means game's over. So if their head comes off, then yeah, you can say search and throw the cookie off, but they don't get the chance to earn more cookies. If they keep the head down, you can just keep giving them bonbons while they're standing there, right? So that's what we want. And eventually as the dog says, I'm good with this, you can then touch the eye, put the eye drops in front of them. Well, that's always meant good things because you've already spent some time conditioning the sight of that. Give them cookies, touch that bottle to their face, give them cookies. Maybe touch your finger right around their eyelids, give them cookies. I might even take a dropper of water because we don't know that eye drops may have a taste because they do go down the back of their throat, but get them used to eye, just water in their eyes first and, and on one drop release, big party, many cookies. All right. So whatever it is that your dog is saying, no, thank you. Number one, I ask that you respect that your dog is saying no, thank you. And say, well, this is important. We have to get it done. So how can I use the things that Susan talked about, create steps that create positive events for my dog. So they want to buy in that leads them to loving these things that they currently afraid of. Right? So when the dog sees the toenail trimmers, guys, go to episode number 107 because I pretty much, you know, step that all out. Dogs shouldn't be afraid of seeing any grooming tools. So whatever it is, and, and if it's a sports specific thing, you just have to be patient with the dogs, allow them to give you their feedback. And when they're saying, I'm not comfortable, that I'm not comfortable might come in the form of them leaving you and sniffing or running off or getting the zoomies. It's all feedback. You just have to be open to be shaped by dog. I'll see you next time. Good. Tanner's pretty good at hitting targets. Now it's your turn. If you're not a subscriber to this page, go ahead and smash that subscribe button now. And if you are already a subscriber, that's for you. Go ahead and get yourself a favorite cookie. Oh, yeah, sorry. Wasn't paying attention. Wasn't paying attention.